Welcome to the series Writing for Games. In this video, I want to examine quests as smaller spaces and shorter term. But before we go too far, let's review what we've talked about so far. So in the previous video introducing quests, I described them as imposing structure, providing variety, and suggesting meaningful actions to players. Quests allow us to give meaning to play. We can allow sets of things a player can do and also allow them options between those things they can collect versus eliminate, for example, and allow them to express meaningful actions within their play. They might want to get one reward over another. So as we're thinking about quests, we often design them as very large things. There might be an entire campaign made up of different steps. But we can also think of quests as smaller things, and in fact this is pretty common in role-playing games or games with role-playing game aspects. We often think of them as side quests or secondary quests. So as part of this video, let's think of quests as actually a set of parts that we can then give to a player to allow them to shape the play and compose things in the way they want. So let's think in different parts. Instead of a really long campaign or a really long series of quests, an ongoing quest chain, let's instead think of quests as different parts. So within this metaphor, let's kind of concentrate on two different ideas. As first clusters of quests and then as ongoing quests. So in particular, when we think of quests and parts, we're interested in quests as clusters of things. And this is us using quests to guide player actions. Think, for example, within the hypothetical of wanting to guide players to a particular area of the map. One of the ways to do that is to entice them with potentially multiple different types of quests all happening in that area. So one type of player might decide to take all of the quests on. Another type of player might, de might decide to take some of those quests on. But regardless, the outcome is going to be the same. They will visit the same region or see the same general set of characters. And so allowing us to set up clusters of quests allows to kind of shape the experience among a region or among different characters. Thinking in very similar terms, we can also describe quests as things ongoing. So it might be a little bit strange to think of smaller term and smaller spaces as something that's an ongoing or a longer quest. But the importance of how this quest and its reward structure is put together is in that it is smaller experiences. So again, instead of a very long campaign or a very long quest with many, many objectives, this is something a player can dip into, do something, and then dip back out of. So smaller sessions, smaller areas, and again, smaller sets of time. Again, thinking of quests within parts. So let's look at a few different examples and then we'll wrap this video up with some homework. So let's look, for example, at Genshin Impact. So if you're playing Genshin Impact, you can potentially complete many different types of quests at the same time. Experience and commissions quests can be completed and are often in the same region. Sometimes they're not and you need to move around within a region or move around within different spaces to complete them, but often they will overlap. Within those spaces are often quests put together where the player needs to collect a certain number of things or eliminate or destroy a certain number of things. And these again overlap within the same region, pro providing that kind of clustered effect, keeping a character within a certain space and having all of those experiences within that same region or within that same country or however the game is thinking of space. At the same time, we can think of a game like Day of the Diver as having lots of different missions, what we would call quests all needing multiple sessions, multiple dives in the game to collect things. In one particular session or dive, there might be some fishes or items collected, and the next more, and this would be an ongoing thing of short sessions, short, short areas, and short design, but made up of a longer and ongoing thing. Finally, let's look at something from Yakuza Like a Dragon. In this case, this is another ongoing quest example, where the player could dip in and out of an ongoing quest. So they can do things in a short session and they need not complete all the objectives. They could, clean, they could collect a certain number of quests, then trade those quests for a particular item or particular gear, and then come back to it later. In all these cases though, notice that we're thinking of quests as short parts, short story parts within a larger structure. We might have some 
clusters of certain quests in the same area, the same characters, or however we might want to overlap them. And we might also have some ongoing quests. We're thinking of short spaces and short time periods. A player can dip in and dip out without needing to worry about it. So let's end this on a little bit of homework. I want to encourage people who are interested in watching the series to also try some of these things in their own time. So the homework for this particular video is to think of two short quests of different types. We talked in a previous video of the types of quests that are pretty common across many games. Again, some games might have more types and some games might have less, but generally we think of them as either get, so we're collecting some number of things, flowers, petals, whatever. We can also think of uh, destroy, so we're eliminating a certain number of things, fuel depots, trees, whatever. We can also think of escort or protect in a very similar way. So different types that exist within the same area or that within the same region that a player might be trying to complete at the same time. So each of these quests, so these two short quests, should overlap with each other. For example, eliminating flower creatures grants you petals, and so too does picking up these outside encounters. In fact, that's very common MMORPG design, where often players are asked to do clusters of quests that have similar outcomes. That is, you might be collecting something and also eliminating enemies, which gets you those experience points or rewards, which might also get you the same item. And so the quests are getting done faster by clustering them together. So finally, as part of this homework, consider using rewards to complement each quest to encourage players doing them at the same time. Some players might do one quest, go do something else, and then come back and do a second quest in the same area. By clustering them and very specifically thinking about the sign of the reward structure of these quests, we can often encourage players to do them all at the same time. So as we're moving through this video series, if you're experiencing one video after another, I encourage you to start thinking about quest design, not only in this video as parts, and the previous video as part of how we impose structure and suggest different meaningful actions, but also how we can use all of these things as part of an ongoing toolkit by thinking about how we construct games as a series of different tools we use depending on how we want to do different things. As we start to think about quests, at least within this video, think about them as small things we can have players do. Small sets of tasks, small sets of rewards to encourage certain types of play or play within the particular areas of the game or among certain characters within a game. All of these hopefully should help you as you start writing games and thinking about how we can use quests in different ways. Thanks for watching.